I understand, though. I understand. So, Paul will, um, I'm going to do a short recap, so that mm -hmm. way you can hear the recap as we go into um, the final slides. Okay. And I may revisit this, but again, like I said, um, I started to cancel today, and then I said, no, that's not fair to everyone. So if you look at the first slide that Paul has there, these are the elements of the tree of life. So there are different elements of the tree of life that lies within every believing individual. Mm -hmm. So I'm going from uh, the teachings that I've had on this source of life that feeds in through your crown, the top of your head into your body that makes you connected and interconnected with the, the divine one, the sacred one, the Messiah, the most high one, uh, the angelic beings that come to help and assist us in life. So the last, the last elements that we're dealing with are Kod, Nekdak, and Yasad. So these are the last three elements of the tree of life, but we're also at the end going to deal with Maku. I can do a whole separate teaching on that if I needed to. So Paul, let's go to our next slide. This is where I can let Miss Carolyn know where we've been in this study. Okay. So Ms. Carolyn, if you look there, the tree of life, the uh, Jewish tree of life has 10 elements to it or two placings in one's body. It does not um. be at the one that is beauty, tefero. Tefero is your heart and your heart is considered beauty. And it is the area that we talk about. The heart is deceitful and wicked. Well, according to the ancient teachings of our Jewish brothers and sisters, the heart is beautiful. But I think the deception comes in when you don't place the heart where it's supposed to be. So, Miss mm -hmm. Carolyn, as we have gone along in the first three elements, the Kether, the Chakma, and the Bina, the first three elements, I argue that we always accept Yeshua into our heart, but never invite the Messiah into our mind. So the mind is also a place where you can have some issues. So God and the son of God is an intellectual work that one must do. Because we have, we're so heart centered, we forget the mind part and all types of things get poured into our kether. Your kether, if you touch the top of your head, Miss Carolyn, that's your uh -huh. crown. That's what the kether is, your crown. And God crown. crowns you, and the energy comes down through you. So the first that we dealt with was chakma. These are the things that sit on either side of your shoulder, bena and chakma. So you have understanding and you have wisdom. wisdom. So wisdom should be informing your understanding. It's kind of like we have discussed before. You can have someone with a lot of book knowledge, but no wisdom. Or I call wisdom that ancient thing my grandmother talked about, good old common sense. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. as you come on through, understanding that you're crowned, you're receiving all of who the Messiah is in through your crown. Just like when they anoint someone, they start pouring on their head, not their heart. So the, this is refocusing how you focus where God is located in you and how God flows through you. So we went to Hesed and Geburah. So you have strength and you have mercy. So your mercy should also inform your strength. And I located that coming down like on either side of your arm, right in the arm area coming down. You have your, your strength and your mercy. So okay. then the other part is your beauty sits between your strength and your mercy. So that's the middle, your face. The, no, it's the right center. It, the, the oh, beauty, your heart. Okay. Right, it's kind of like below where your physical heart would be a little bit, kind of what they would call, I think it's the sacral. Uh, so you can get into the, uh, the Eastern um, Hindu people would call it the chakra those energy points in your body. Mm -hmm. Same thing if you have um, any type of uh, acupuncture done. 
This is the energy that they're dealing with within your body. So your spirit and your soul affects your physical being. How do we know? Because when the spirit and the soul departs, the physical being withers away. So these elements inside are what make you function. This tree of life that grows from the creator from, through the Messiah down into us is an integral part of who we are and how we are. The sadness is, in my assessment, <laughs> is that we've always been taught backwards in some ways in how to entreat and invite the sacred energy of God that is given to us freely from the, our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Yeshua did not want us cut off of any of this but better, he wanted us opened up to all of the sacred divine energy that makes us who we are. So those are the things that we went through. So Tefero is beauty. I believe that when you accept something in your heart, it has to be balanced between your mercy and your strength. So if you're starting there, you still have to get into the other energies. And the energy of God the good things of God flow forth from God down to the children of the Most High God. So that is in keeping with the thought that I'm giving you on the tree of life within. So one of the things I said last week in your prayer and meditation time, if you take the time and you see these images that I'm giving you and you see the light and the love of God coming right through your crown and crowning you and pulling that energy and sacred energy into your bina and your hakma, your understanding and your wisdom, and then flowing down to your chesed and your gavura. You start to, you should have a different experience with God as you pull all of that energy down into the beauty. Now, one energy that, of course, which I told you last week, I had to manually include that they don't teach that we just up was the da'at. And the da'at is located above the heart. And da'at means knowledge. It's Jewish for knowledge. And that is, I don't think da'at manifests in everyone. I think it should manifest in more people than it does, but because of the misteaching of how the energy of God flows and comes into the believer as we receive and we accept all of who Christ is. So yes, we are sanctified and justified all at once but, the, but then we are limited because of our, our lack of knowledge. So da'at is that knowledge that's there. It's an energy that's within, that sits above the heart, but in between the, the understanding and the wisdom and, and below it than the, uh, the crown. The da'at is that it comes in in a way that your hunger and your thirsting is knowledge you you want to pull into your energy and into your crown knowledge because you're hungry for the knowledge of God this is a part of that knowledge that you're pulling in to get an understanding how does you know you know mercy and and, and strength and understanding and wisdom how does that all work together how are the destinies of the crown and the wisdom and the understanding and the mercy the strength and the beauty how are they interconnected and how are they interconnected in me? Yeah. All of that comes from Yeshua. Yeshua would not have made it through the wilderness without understanding how the creator was living in him. The Holy Spirit didn't fly into Jesus's heart. The Holy Spirit lit on Jesus from his head down like a dove, mm -hmm. gentle and soft. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Carolyn? No, I'm understanding. Okay. Hmm. So this week, as you look, you will see that we're going to deal with Netzach, Victory, Chad, Splendor and Glory, Yesod, Foundation, and Makut, Kingdom. So let's go to the next slide, Mr. Kaufman. How are you this evening, Mr. Kaufman? I'm doing well. All right, all right. Whereas your chesed and your gavura signify unbounded loving kindness and its construct and constriction so that infinite, finite creatures can receive according to their ability. So this is, again, that's important for you to know. Some of this is according to your ability. Most believers have been disabled in this area. We are literally handicapped 
in the area of having an intellectual conversation about the spiritual matter that we are. And this is dealing with the spiritual matter that you are. And um, it's your gift from God. I don't think the gift of the Holy Spirit came just for us to see smoke every now and then and maybe periodically hear someone speak in tongues and see the gifts and things. This is understanding the functioning of the sacred energy within each believer. Netzach and Hod are the two sephirot in which, which define the ability of the receipt, the recipient to receive. In addition, they perform together as the joint distribution committee, which decides how and in what measure each recipient gets get its due. So if you look at this, this is coming down further before you get to Malkuth. And it's important that these work together. So why would you think it's important for victory? Netzach is victory. Yahad is splendor and glory. Glory. Yesod is foundation. So when you're pulling that energy in, this is where that energy is beginning to build a foundation and bringing the splendor and the glory and the victory that we have in Christ Jesus. That's why this area is so important. So the foundation and the glory and the victory was not what came into your head. It's all of these elements flowing down into those areas. Any questions? So again, if none of you utilize this when you're in your prayer time, even if you think what I'm presenting to you is worthless and foolish, might I add, sometimes you need to take time to seek out God in your prayer and meditation time and be willing to throw away an old dead thought that you've lived with your whole life or your mama and papa gave to you and then begin to experience. Mm -hmm. This is the, the elements of experiencing God within. This is a, what Howard Thurman called the greatest search. The greatest search we do is within, not without. And you have all that you need. You have but to search for it within and understand that God has order even with your soul and your spirituality within. That's what this tree of life is about. You are not cut off from the tree of life. It's growing in you. No one just, no one told you. Oh, okay. So we keep looking for something physical, a physical tree like that's out in our yard. While there is a tree like that, that is spoken of in Revelation. But there were two, because one grew on one side of the the water of life, because there was water of life, tree of life, and one grew on the other. There's an element of the spirit, spiritual essence of the strengthening of the tree of life that grows in each and every one of us. Now, it is limited many times because of our ignorance of the inner workings of the Father of lights within us through the Messiah. And on this Ash Wednesday, might I add, to understand who we are, as part of, you hear me say, the dust world creation. That's what the Jewish rabbi I studied with would call this realm, the dust world creation, where everything was created from dust and dirt, which is why we return to that. Even the animals return to the earth. The trees, if they fall, return to the earth. So this is about the dust world creation and how we live beyond the destruction in this realm, and we connect back with the tree of life that we were cut off from. Yeshua did all of that work for us to reconnect, not to further disconnect from the things of God. And I leave the floor for questions. Any questions? No questions. So I wanted to give another visual here. May so I Paul, make a statement? You may I make a statement? Mm -hmm. Charlotte. Yes. Uh, in, a, in a way, I'm, I'm kind of confused of what you just said. So what are you trying to say to us, or what are you trying to teach us, is that no matter what, 
how we figure our lives should be, we have had a small misunderstanding of what we suppose, what, how we're supposed to live our lives with the Creator, and that the difference in that is with these uh, tree of life, with the learning to alert, to know the tree of life, we have to really get a better understanding of exactly what the tree of life is going to be about and how it come about? Is that what you're trying to tell us? What I'm trying to tell you is that the very tree of life is set up in your own being. Okay. Okay. It's not separate from you. You are no longer cut off from the tree of life. Oh, the okay. The body is that around is. you. So the tree of life grows down to us like the father oh, of lights grows down to us. Which is oh, why I keep pointing out it's a misteaching of, imagine if we said to people, do you accept uh, Jesus as the Messiah in your mind? Mm -hmm. And people would be like, well, what do you mean in your mind? Then you have to give a different description of the Messiah. You have to tell a little bit more of the work and how Jesus got here. But when people say, oh, just receive Jesus in your heart and you become a part of the body of Christ, there's no further discussion. Discussion. People, oh, Jesus is in my heart. And then they wonder why their mind's still messed up and whatever they put their hands to is as messed up as their minds. Because we never, I don't think, and this would be a theological argument at probably a PhD level if I ever did that, that, that I would make. I believe that, yes, Jesus is in your heart. But if Jesus mm -hmm. is not in your mind, then why do you say, you know, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus? Who thought it not robbery to be equal with God? Okay, okay. So th this is about getting okay. your, shifting your mind, even if you can't grasp all of it, what you can grasp, Miss Virginia, hold on to it. Okay. Like okay. if you get the crown, God's glory, and everything flowing in through the top of your head down to your shoulders. If you just get that part, then on one side is wisdom and the other side is understanding, and that starts to work together, then you take your time and you build in the other elements because it is a work. The thing is, we've been doing the work backwards because we started at our heart, then we rushed to do certain things. We never intentionally engage our minds in a way that turns on the glorious light from above. That's my assessment. It may not be others, but I do open the floor for any other discussion. Thank you, Miss Virginia. All right, I got a, a better understanding of what you're saying now. Uh -huh. I know this is quite different it is. It is. And it's one of the things I haven't rushed to teach because I didn't know if you guys were ready to hear it. Um, but it made a difference in my how to, in my prayer and my meditation. Because as one who is a seeker of God, God and a seeker of knowledge, I mean, I, in my younger years, I literally was panting and searching and seeking and wanting as much knowledge as I could of God. And then the rabbi said, well, then, guess what? You need to invite God into your mind. You invited God into your heart. Why didn't you invite? But see, yeah, if it didn't make it sense to sit right with my heart and I just don't feel it, then I threw it away. No, you need to invite God into your mind. For example, Paul Kaufman had to go invite law into his mind, not his heart. Yes, yes. Abby had to go invite teaching into her mind so she had something to teach. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm just saying this season as you go through Lent, this is a good source and I emailed my PowerPoint to everyone. Hello. This is a good source for during your Lent time, whatever you're giving up, for you to begin to meditate on, on the things. And I'm not the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. She leads and guides us into all truth. So I would suggest many conversations with her concerning this tree of life that is within you. So, Paul, let's go to the next slide. I was very good. I'm trying to how it was. Oh, 
Paul, did you just make it bigger? <laughs> Is that Linda? Yes, I'm here. Hi, Linda. Hello. Hi, Miss Linda. Hi, Linda. Hi, Linda. Hi, Linda. Hi, so, Paul, the next slide is just where I give images of how the Jewish community constructs the tree of life. There we go. There we go. So, I wanted you to see that when you talk about the sephiro, the tree of life, the sephiro, this is what the Jewish people are going to show you. This is the tree of life within. Before the slideshow is over, I did do what Julius asked me to do. I have a human being standing there so you can see how this energy is laid out in your body. Now, what I did also was I pulled a slide that, now I know for a lot of Christians, the word magic kind of sends people over the edge, but just leave it alone. If you look at the first top one, this one includes da'at. It's logos, it's word. I'd like to let them into your Say what, Julius? Sorry, I said, I'd like Collect on that just a second. When you see the word magic, think of the magi, like like yeah, the three women. When you see that, it's really I just not. Work at the center that I'm at, but I apply in the Jewish tradition. It's just another word. Jesus. Knowledge. Okay. Okay. So, hopefully I get it so, so can you can see that what I did was because you can break yeah. this down in so many ways, and our Jewish brothers and sisters who have spent five, six, seven thousand years doing nothing but studying their yeah, God. They, could, right. they can break this down. That when you get to those center parts where you have your mercy and your strength and the beauty of your heart, that's your ethics. The upper part is dealing with the word, the logos. And then the bottom gets into the priesthood. If that makes any sense. So I don't know why a dot came up there. But again, I emailed this to everyone. If you want to pull it up, make it bigger. I'll send, I think I sent, did some of you receive links to other Jewish sites where you can go read on this more? This is, if you're in the Jewish community, this is taught about. And if you've ever seen a Hamsa, do you know what a Hamsa is? No, ma'am. No. Have you ever seen the Jewish hand that looks like it has an eye on it and then it has all type of letters above it? They even break down the energy of God that comes through the hand. Because remember, when you were anointed, it poured from the top of your head down. But then there were other areas like your left thumb would be anointed or your left toe. And that had to do with your work and, you know, where you were walking, all of those things. So if you go back to Moshe's writing of the law and the anointing and stuff, if you see the detail of that, they're dealing with, the energy within, but at that time you had no Messiah. So it was done all outwardly. You didn't have the gift of the Holy Spirit. It was done outwardly. So that's, that's important to study the Jewish tradition a little bit because Jesus was in fact Jewish, right? And so right. we see the laws and, and what is understood through Jesus because his word can't return to him void. Right. Well, Jesus brought the law to life. And they would marvel on, well, how does, he's, never, he's not a learned person, you know, uh, but he knew so much because the, the spirit lived in him without measure. The spirit is measured with us, but the same spirit that lived in Yeshua and pulled in all of the sacred energy that was there for him, he was able to have the wisdom and the understanding so much so that they marveled. Because they would say, this woman committed adultery. But Jesus said, well, that's because you don't have wisdom and understanding. If you've done it in your heart, in that beautiful part of you, then you, you've already sinned. So you see how that folded in the wisdom and the understanding and the strength and the mercy? The strength and the mercy is you're about to kill this lady for something that she did physically when you, the same sin is if you've just done it in your heart. And you deserve to be stoned for that as well. So people didn't know what to do with that type of teaching. That Yeshua bought another level. He brought the 3D levels to it and sometimes higher understanding to all of those situations that were coming forth. Any further questions? 
So Paul, we'll go to the next slide. So Hod, Hod is a sphere of the solar level of consciousness. It is the realm of ideas and, of ideas and communications, contracts, and travel. The idea of reality creating has its basis in this sphere and of the skill to manifest and unmanifest things at will. So now, you know how we sit down or I call and give Patty a prayer request, which Linda, I'm going to be calling you for a prayer request. This is the energy I'm talking about. When you go in and you're praying and you find a scripture and you start ascribing it to that to say, oh no, I want to unmanifest sickness in someone. So you start praying for a healing. That's unmanifesting something. That's innocent. Or you want to manifest in them good health and wisdom and favor. This is the area. It's all there. It's just where this area comes from. This is coming from the center of who you are. The heart is the upper part, part of the upper being of who you are. Now, Pastor, mm -hmm. um, now that you're on that, I did have a question about, like, I know we pray and we talk to God and with God, but I've heard of intercessors having specific ways to pray to really fight the warfare. Right. And the example that was given to me, um, I think right before Jesus was going to be crucified, he, he prayed to God, right? Mm -hmm. And he prayed so much that his head started to bleed because the future started to manifest upon him. That's the way it was explained to me. Okay. If, we are, if, if we're interceding and we're praying, is there a point in prayer where we pray so much to deliver cancer that we start feeling and empathizing with other people the same pain that they're going through sometimes that can happen but from my assessment when yeshua was in the garden of gethsemane and he begins what really happened to him was a physical act people can be in so much despair that their their pores literally begin to um hemorrhage Oh. And you're talking about a divine being who from the foundation of the earth was the first being created of God and with God. And now oh. he's seeing what has to happen. And he remember, we do get, we didn't get all of what Jesus was praying to the father, but we do know he asked if the cup could pass, let it pass. So, so just have, if somebody, if you're standing there and someone's about to do to you what was done with, to Jesus, and understand, Jesus probably had walked by people who had been crucified. Rome had no problem. They put you on display when they crucified you. It was not done in a cute little room where they put glass windows around and let certain people come and watch the way we do executions. They wanted the whole city, the whole area, anyone that came to visit, they wanted them to see how they dealt with criminals, how they dealt with people that came against Caesar, who was God, so to speak. So Jesus saying that he was the son of God was saying that, oh no, Caesar is a God. That's the whole point of him being arrested. Oh. Because oh. the Jewish people were like, well, you know, we're going to show you they, for them, that's a sin to make yourself similar and same substance as the creator. So the answer was no, Mary was raped by a Roman man. You know, this, Joseph just married her so she didn't get killed. Well, obviously Joseph loved her because they had children after Yeshua. So it was more to it than that. Does that help any? Does anyone else have any questions? Linda is a fantastic uh, person as far as intercessory prayer and things like that. So I don't know if she can add any insight uh, as well. I, I never knew, um, never heard it explained the way you just did. I just know that uh, I, I just always thought it was a gift or something that God had given me. It's just or uh, that I had just grew up with praying grandmothers and I learned to pray. Uh, there are certain things that, that I do during Lent when I do pray or, or when I'm in a season for special, special prayers for people. Mm -hmm. uh, but I just 
I had never heard anybody explain why I did it. It was just something I, I guess it was that inner, inner spirit telling me this was what I needed to do. So that area, I would say, is probably very activated and active in you as the energy of God flows into you from the, the Holy Spirit. But this is also a place where you meet with Archangel Mikael, which lets you know why so many intercessors, they, they cut down because Mikael has a sword. Mm -hmm. So Michael is, being, is a being to call upon when you need protection or, in some, or, or are in some type of danger. Uh, so this is that energy hard. So think about it. this is part of intercessory. That is a strength area, but it's a level of consciousness. Because when you intercede, you don't lose consciousness. You stay wide awake. You know exactly what you're going after. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? So we'll go to Netzach. So this is more associated with soul energy. So you see Netzach with the power to overcome those obstacles which stand in the way of realizing one's chesed demonstration. I can't pronounce all that. To bestow goodness upon creation. Netzach denotes victory. So this is a victory area. This is why I'm saying Linda has success when she prays Things happen and things change. I need this to get with Linda. <laughs> <laughs> Julia I, said, oh, I need to get with Linda. So, I, I'm going to uh, with Linda or, or follow up with you, Miss Linda. All right. Yes, ma'am. So you see that Netzach is victory. Okay. So this is where it can be said that the ultimate victory of Netzach is that over death itself. Boom, Jesus. <laughs> the final impediment to the pursuit of chesed, mercy, loving kindness. So you see how all of this energy, so if you say you're looking for the mercies of God, first look, the, if you're, your God is a merciful God and God lives big in you, locate that mercy of God in yourself. Locate the victory of God in yourself the wisdom of God, the understanding of God, all of those things the believers should be able to locate within yourself. You cannot have such a profound thing happen so mightily in you through the Son of God that you're called a new creation and born again and be lacking spiritually and in the soul area. It's because the understanding, that part of the mind has not been engaged with the things of God just dealing with the heart and the beauty. So when you come to sometimes the things that are outside of that, it's hard to deal with it. So I purposely put one little story on here to see if it would clarify this, uh, this very strong area of Nitzah. Before killing Agag, the king of Amalek, the prophet Samuel said, and also the Netzach, the victory of God, shall not deceive and not regret, for he is not a man who regrets. Now Samuel 1, 15, 1 Samuel 15, verse 29. 1 Samuel 15, verse 29. To regret means to change one's mind. The sephirah of Nitzah stands firm forever and never regrets. So I, when someone is a thorough prayer warrior, an intercessory person, they're going to go in and cut without mercy, especially if you get into that energy and you realize that the fallen forces have something. In it. You don't have no regret. You cut that demon and, oh, well, you keep moving. Yeah, I need to get with Miss Linda. <laughs> Linda, he is going to get with you. So you see why Mikael, as far as the archangel, I was, I was thinking about pulling, I'd have to pull so much information to show you the angelic realms that deal with, you are a universe by design. You have come from the most high God, the mind of God, the hand of God knits you in your mother's room. Womb, you are not some trifling being. You are a powerful being. 
And this study shows you that you are a powerful being, that 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 the early man and woman was cut off from pulls down and grows and lives in you is a big deal. Mm -hmm. For me, it is anyway. Because when I first started studying, I was like, the tree of life lives where? In me? Really? <laughs> So there you can see that information. So we're gonna go to Yassad. Next slide, Paul. So I, I emailed this to you so you can go and read and I'll send you some of the links because you do have to go into the studies of our Jewish brothers and sisters to understand this. I There may be some out there, but I have not seen a Christian study. Christians, this should be something that we study. We are a sect of Judaism. We cannot accept a Jewish Messiah and throw away everything Jewish. Can't do it. It's like, you know, marrying a Native American and then being surprised that they act very Native American. <coughs> so Yassad, just as the Sephira and the Tephira harmonizes and balances Chesed and Gavura, so too Yasad harmonize and balances Nazak and Hod. So you've got that, that, see it's a balancing act and all of these energies flow. Um, I got it at a deeper level the first time I had acupuncture because he was saying the blockages that I had. Sometimes I will tell you my mercy gets blocked. I'm just going to say. Yeah, <laughs> and I need it to flow because Julius would tell you I, I am one known to cut your head off and throw it in the street yep yep now Julius you still have to be so much in agreement <laughs> I'm just saying you know no regrets you, you don't regret I, no right? regrets no regrets so um, Netzach and Hod, distri Hod distribute the divine influx and determine the character and the amount the recipient receives. Yesod is the actual distribution point. So might I add again, Linda being a thorough person in prayer, this area is fully activated in you. Fully. So my thing would be in prayer and meditation for you to begin to make sure all the other areas are linked with it and you will see an expanse happening in your prayer and your intercessory prayer where you're affecting the person on different levels more than just the one level they gave you to pray about. Hmm. Thus, Yassad functions as the connector between all the separate Everything coming in, this is a connecting point. Mm -hmm. Makut is below it. So next slide. This is for me, this is where I really got it in my studies. Next slide, Paul. Any questions? Let me open the floor if there's any questions. So Makut is a very big and dynamic sphere, more so than the other spheres of the tree of life. The rich diversity of the earth plane interpenetrates here and makes Malkuth a wonderland of things to do and see. Malkuth is an adventure. Malkuth means kingdom. This is where having done all, had gird in your loins, shod your feet, helmet is taking the helmet of salvation, of faith, and breastplate. Well, you all of that is in place. You wouldn't need all that. Uh, stuff to put on and you didn't have all these areas to protect. But you come down to my cooth. My cooth is where when all of this is flowing in you, when you hit your feet and you touch, that's the kingdom of God. My cooth is kingdom of God. Pastor, your, vo your uh, microphone. My microphone, did it go off? Well, you no, know, it just was breaking up for a second. Okay, well, I am on the internet, so um, Makuth is kingdom of God. So your feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel. The gospel is what touches this realm and changes it. You are the kingdom of God. Imagine the change we would have if we put the elements of this teaching in what we do. And watch people when you tell them, are you ready to receive Jesus into your mind? 
they were going, wait, they probably going, wait a minute, I'm supposed to be, no, let's start where we're supposed to start. Because now everyone has Yeshua, the things of the Messiah, in their heart, and then we're trying to get back up into the other things and understand what flows through here and there. This is just like spiritual medicine. There's no way one can be a podiatrist without pulling back the layers of the skin on the feet and understanding the first metatarsal all the way to the fifth metatarsal. This is understanding all of that within you spiritually. So I can argue it from a medical point of view, from a law point of view, and a spiritual point of view, why this is so important for the believer in this realm. With this knowledge, you should be armed and dangerous. Can I have some literature on the wombs of the spirit? The womb? I, yes, ma'am, the womb. So I, would, I did a lesson on that once. Um, so Hesed, when you go back to the energy of Hesed, mercy, it's also in, the pro, in a different construct, it means the womb. So I'll try to find that teaching and email it to you, Julius. But I thought there were several room, uh, wombs. Like we have the ear gate and the eye gate. So like the ear is a reproductive organ because when you hear things, you repeat them. When you see things, you repeat them. When, you know, Jesus is walking back and forth, he's taking back sovereignty. So, you know, the foot represented sovereignty. So that was reproductive. So I thought there were several. And then, you know, of course, Adam and Eve, he took the rib. I don't understand that one yet. But I know, I know that it's reproductive. Now, did y'all hear this young man? Mm -hmm. You have to be able to talk at this level if you want young people in your church. He is doing his studies and he's seeking out God. And Julius, you're absolutely correct. There are different areas of birth. But the one I spoke of was the, that merciful womb of God from which everything flowed, including your ear. So oh. I'm talking about the beginning point of all created things, all created wounds even. So you're absolutely correct, and that's a different level of spiritual study that you just expounded on. Does anyone have any questions for Julius on some of the things he just said, which were very profound? I'm sorry, y'all, I wasn't trying to. Uh, Don't ever apologize no, who you are. Great job. I thought you explained it beautifully. Mm -hmm. Thank you. you know, so the thing is, you know, Julia, you talk about the different wounds and things. Sometimes something's being birthed in you that has to come into this realm. And God utilizes you, your whole being, as a womb to bring, give birth to it. Mm -hmm. And it may be painful, but you got to run and do this, or you got to do that. You got to talk to this person. You got to sit down. You got to do this proposal. But it's still a birthing process. Mm -hmm. So now I think that should give you a better understanding of why I said in Revelation you see the new city Jerusalem coming into the realm. And it's measured what? 1,400 miles one way and the other way. Everything's 1,400. But that's not the whole kingdom. That's just a city in the kingdom. So when you understand that light of God that flows in you and you get to Malkuth and you understand you are the kingdom of God. You are the real estate. Um, so guess what? Patty and Paul live there at their home. That's real estate of God. Miss Carol, where you are, even the believer as they go into the other side, real estate of God. You, God is the, I guess, has the deed of trust, so to speak. Or own is the title deed. But you are the kingdom of God. We are the real estate in the kingdom of God. Any other questions? So, Julius, this last slide is just for you because you told me to lay it out in the body and I wanted you guys to see it. I, I didn't get a long time to study it, uh, but this final slide, it gives you a little bit of what I'm talking about. So you can Thank see it in, in the body. Well, according to the Jewish belief within the Kabbalah, each sephirot or sphere is responsible for materializing each of the universal archetypes 
that shaped the world as we know it, trying to express that it is possible to separate it into 10 equal parts as elements and characteristics. Oh, what was that noise? Characteristics. Therefore, each sphere is recognized by a particular name. So some people live, if we, we know some people, they're just all knowledge. It's when all of this is working together and the only life you, if you study the life of Jesus, every last bit of this was in full effect, all the way to the point that he had full victory. And he would tell people, guess what? You came near the, uh, the kingdom of God. Somebody bumped into him. Oh, you just bumped into the kingdom of God. Recognizing who you are in the scheme of things. Just like Yeshua was a part of the kingdom of God, his whole being, so too are you. The tree of life represents a map in which the various aspects of the world, uh, humanity and life itself are established. Its intention is to give answers about everything that can generate doubt and knowledge, a guide to what you want to understand. In a more technical form, it is the representation of a great structure that embraces every element existing in the universe from the galaxies to a particle of dust and this ash wednesday might i add we you know the ashes the ashes the dust the dust we are a part of the dust world creation and we usually burn the palm leaves from the previous passover time to remind us Any questions? Miss Carolyn, it may be something we have uh, more conversation about, but I, I do say that this should be committed in your prayer time as well. And don't try to eat the whole pie at one time. Take it a slice at a time. That's why I go back up to slide two, Paul. There we go, right there. Slide two. There are 10 elements here. So this, this can keep you busy. I just give it to you, gave it to you in threes. So understand the crown. Remember the way the Lord gave it to me? The crown wasn't just for the head, it was for the whole body. That means the whole glory of God going down through everything. The tree of life, you know, isn't just as leaves. It says bark and roots and everything. So is the... Uh, the crown of God that comes in. So this should give you an understanding. So you see the Jewish name and the transliterate, the English name. So if anything, if you pull up what I sent you, this should help you there. Now, Linda, we understand that you have mastered victory, splendor, or glory, and foundation. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Well, you know what? It's an area of conquering, and I think you understand how to do that in the spirit realm with praying for people, interceding for people. So that's a very active area. So I would definitely, uh, if I were you, I would literally, this is just me, I would start with the mercy, the strength, and the beauty, pulling more of that energy into that, and, and then get back to the kefir. That's just me. But I know when I started, because I was totally ignorant, I didn't know what a sephiro was. I didn't know what a kether was. I didn't know anything. And the Jewish community was very, very patient with me. And they took me to the crown. But you know... You're um, saying I should start there and not at the crown. Yes, because you're already... The active... What you want to do is take what's active there and build it up into the beauty and the strength and the mercy. It's almost like that, but then you would need to work your way back down and see all of that working together because the victory part, that's why people call Linda for prayer. Or we'll say, well, we need to have Linda to pray. Because guess what? We know we're going to have victory when she's done. So that's active in you already. Okay. Okay. Well, but community, um, you know, I, I remember because I grew up on Veggie Tales and like the Prince of Egypt too. And um, I know you guys, I'm sorry, don't laugh at me. Um, <laughs> so in that song where it says we were moving mountains long before we knew we could, mm -hmm. and that, that's what made me think of it. So it's not, 
may, if, if she's t identifying this in you, Miss Linda, maybe, you know, you shouldn't doubt yourself on that because she's showing you that you were moving mountains long before you knew you could. I, I, I'm, I'm accepting. I, I hear I'm accepting. Okay. Uh, we're just learning the, the, the correct literature for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, don't you just love that? Julius, that was powerful. She was mm -hmm. moving mountains before she knew she could. Mm -hmm. That's why all of that area right there, her foundation, the, the splendor, the big, all of that is active because that is a power area. So any other questions? I know um, this is a different teaching, maybe a difficult teaching for some, and maybe one that some people think isn't necessary. But then those who are more along the line of uh, spiritual and wanting to grasp God at different levels, I hope this made sense for you. Is it okay if I get my number out and um, like to pastor and maybe get some of y'all's number, Miss Patty and Miss Linda? Is that yes. okay? Yes, it's fine. You too. <laughs> it's good. Just call me after 6.30 in the evening. After 6.30? Uh-huh. Right. So are yes. you on Pacific time or Central, Julius? I'm on, Mount, I'm on Mountain time. Mountain time. Oh, I skipped Mountain all together. So he's on Mountain time. So you would have to figure, you know. That's two hours. Hour. Two hours. So, yes, I'm two hours um, mm -hmm. ahead. I'm two so hours behind. 30, my time would be 4.30, your time. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I don't mind doing that. I can uh, text. Um, you want me to send, Linda, is it okay to send him your information? Yes. Uh, Patty, is it okay for me to send him your contact information? Of course. Okay. Thank y'all. Y'all be nice to Julius. <laughs> I'm lucky. They're nice, Julius. They're very nice. Oh, I know. I know. So we well, opened up going into the teaching. I've always, I've been very prayerful all day. Again, I had dental work done today. Um, mm -hmm. Let's pray that it keeps working. So I asked the creator, the one who is the father of lights, to illuminate the hearts and the minds this day. Bring us into a centering, authentic moment with you, God. I pray that this has caused some to be thirsty for more knowledge of you and your ways of being, God. More knowledge of your son and the ways Jesus functions in the spirit in this realm. I ask God as we begin Lent that we would keep our commitments with you. If we've desired not to have, you know, cake or whatever we're choosing to give up for 40 days for Lent, that you would strengthen us in our hearts and our bodies and our minds, that we would be able to hold fast and stay the course as we celebrate the one you sent to us to be our Passover offering, that we can stand before you, God, with all boldness, bring our prayers in with boldness. I thank you, God, for every listening ear, every mind that has come to engage a sacred text and understand their sacred beings within in a different way. I thank you, God. I ask God if there's anything further that I need to, to teach that you would light the way for me to bring it before these blessed, sacred children of yours, God. I don't take it for granted, God, that you give me the opportunity to teach among my family, my brothers and sisters in Christ. It is in the name of Jesus I do pray. Amen. Amen. So.